whose show is this? It's not my show. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I've done it in the past where uh, I thought I was recording for my show and I was recording for somebody else's show. Hey, what? Anthony. Who? <laughs> <laughs> my friend Anthony. We both he both he has a podcast as well, and we talked about doing one thing, and we both were like, "Yeah," we thought it was for each other's podcast, and then we got in and we're like, "What the fuck?" So I just wanted to make sure. Are you are you threatening me? <laughs> just adding entertainment for the folks who listen, who watch on the my. Chemical room. No, 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 no. My whole confessional uh nice. podcast Patreon. Yeah. Real nice. Yeah. Um, I I failed to mention to Max that uh we we use the recordings, even though he is a Patreon member and has access to to all of uh the content, but somehow hadn't heard any of the podcasts <laughs> or seen any of the videos and wasn't aware of what was happening. So I That's had to myself. let him know that we do <laughs> We do use these. And so I gave him the opportunity <laughs> to add a background and he said, no. So Instead, we get said, I am throwing a pocket knife up and down, but the blades out. Hoping that you won't look behind you at the very unkempt, messy bedroom of okay. Max Booth and, and Lori. Is it Lori Booth? Did she change her name? She did. Okay. And Lori Booth. Very nice. All right. Yeah. Is that okay with you? <laughs> yes, it's, it's it's fine by me. <laughs> Not that long ago, you changed your name too. I, I did minutes, just a few minutes ago. Yeah, just from from Max Booth to Miguel Myers. Yeah, this is going splendidly. <laughs> can I can I intro my podcast real quick? Would that be okay? I've been waiting, dude. Hello, everyone. My name is Miguel Myers. Welcome to my horror confessional where every week I'll have a guest come on and talk about one classic horror movie that they haven't seen and why. We'll discuss the movie, the actors, and probably get off topic quite a bit. Once I believe they have properly atoned, I will absolve them of their horror movie sin. Today, we have returning guest Max Brooks. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean uh, Max Booth the Third. Max, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thank you. It's okay. I mean, I know you got my name wrong. It was an intentional. You wanted to make me feel bad. But it's okay. I understand this is just a podcast and you were doing this for the amusement of the audience. And I, I get that. So I, I choose to look past it. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. You're nothing if not magnanimous. So, Max, what last time, mean? magnanimous. Don't ask me. <laughs> I just like saying it. <laughs> um, so, last time you were on, we talked about The Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, it was a reverse, right? Because I had seen it and you had not. That's right. And I ended up hating it. Yeah. Which you still feel bad about to this day. I didn't end up hating it. It was okay. But before that, we also did a Return of the Living Dead. So this is your third time on the show. So, but since since the last time you were on, I think you had the yeah, that was uh you had um you hadn't published your most recent book. Um, and yeah, I think you had already published Maggot Screaming. So, yeah. Uh, and then you've done just so much since then. So I kind of wanted to give the audience a chance to kind of catch up with you. Um, so you released either before or soon after we had last talked um, Maggot Screaming, right? Yeah, Maggot Screaming came out last year. I think I'm in April. Yeah, because it debuted at the the OG Ghoulish Book Fest. That's when I put the book out. Okay. And that's something I do now too. Is a it's a book fest. You've you've been to it? Yes, I've been to it twice. Uh, next year, can't wait. It's, I mean, a lot of the guests that I have come. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry to my non Patreon subscribers, but this is the most people are going to be running to the Patreon to see yeah. that Max is, uh, is wielding a Swiss Army knife. I'm just going to hold it like this the whole time. Okay, so I am not responsible for you forgetting and going to wipe your brow or something. <laughs> My brow. Yeah, I'm yeah. way too low brow for that. Very nice. <laughs> right, congratulations. Um, so uh, I completely forgot the book, because the book being, fest. Right, the book fest, right. In Max San puts Antonio. out a book fest every year called the uh, Ghoulish Book Festival with along with his wife, Lori. And uh, this is the, or we just had the second annual one, which is so much fun. Uh, a lot of people from that have been guests uh, in the past have come from 
meeting them at, at the Mac, uh, at the Ghoulish Book Festival. So let's be honest, I'm responsible for like ninety percent of the guests you've had in this show. Yeah, you're you're daddy for sure. Podcast daddy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you even helped me. Yeah, you helped me figure out a lot of this stuff. So yeah. um, I'm indebted to you, sir. Uh, because I wanted to talk a bit about the Ghoulish Book Festival. Where did the um, concept or the idea of throwing of starting a book festival come from? Yo, I forgot you do like legit interviews on this show. I thought we will just jump into the movie. No. Um, the oh, idea... but the, I know it's been a while since you've heard a, uh, an episode. But yeah, I, I do talk to my guests before. Listen, I'm, I'm up front. I haven't listened to your podcast in a long time. I understand. But, but, Listen, not but, a lot of people have. I appreciate I the honesty. I have not listened. I am waving this knife around. <laughs> I just told you. To. <laughs> I have not listened to many <laughs> podcasts in a long time. When I quit my, I used to listen to a lot at my hotel job. And when I quit that, I just lost that outlet to listen to podcasts. I, I sometimes listen to them when I go on walks, but I haven't done a lot of walking lately because if you go outside, you melt. We live in Texas. It's awful. Listen, the more you try to cover your tracks, the worse I'm feeling. So we could just move past. Let's just move. Let's just move on. How about what? Exactly. So, so, <laughs> oh, so you podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, where it came from, uh, you know, honestly, just spite and wanting just vil- villainous beefs I have with people of attending Neville Book Fest and thinking this is terrible. Like we could do a much better job at this. We should do one and prove myself right. And so that being honestly, that's where it came from. Doing Neville Fest that you know. Well, fun to do, but usually don't have a lot of sales. And me knowing why that is, and usually that has to do with a uh, a lack of local advertising and also marketing the events for two riddles instead of those who read. So I wanted to do a fest that did the opposite of that, and so we did. And it was fun, and lots of people came, and we're going to keep doing it. It's a blast every year and every to a person, nobody has ever said a negative word about the ghoulish book. They said tons of negative shit about you, but the festival itself is just amazing. Uh, and uh, I love doing it every year. Let me ask um, you something. When yeah. I said about me, could you hear me say that? I said about me and you, and you immediately commented as if you had heard me say. No, I didn't me. hear you say that at all. No. Uh, okay. Because I was muted and I thought, whoa, how the fuck did you pick that up? <laughs> no, no. It was I good didn't. timing. Okay. So yeah, we were just on the same mind. Yeah. Same wavelength. Um, so uh, I was insulting you and you interrupted me and gave me a compliment, <laughs> I think. But I, I'm trying to get back in the mind of insulting you. Yes, yeah, so you're a piece of shit, but the Ghoulish Book Festival is great. Mm-hmm. Um so you're doing it again next year. Potentially. What is, right. Hopefully. Yeah. Having some issues with uh, getting the contract official with the venue. So I uh, I hesitate to say anything is official until that contract is signed. Yeah. But most likely it's going to happen uh, next March. Same, same, same place. Hopefully. Yeah. Downtown San Antonio. Great building. Great location. Um, but besides that, and your publishing work, you and you and your own, you and Lori have your own publishing company. You also very recently opened. You guys recently up a bookstore. Yeah, that's right, baby. It's, <laughs> um, it's called Ghoulish Books. Big surprise. Same name as the press. Ghoulish Books is a bookshop that focuses on spooky stuff only. It's located at the tip top of San Antonio. In sorry, town. I'm very sorry to interrupt you. You said it concentrates on spooky stuff only. However, when I was there, <laughs> there was a book by a director. <laughs> it was called Rebel Without a Crew by yeah. Robert Rodriguez. Now, that's yeah. not spooky. There's no horror in that. Are you, are you, are you sure about that? It's not opening you up to the nightmare hellscape of, of capitalism. I mean, there's a whole section mill, the dude becomes a, a lab rat just to pay his bills and make a movie it's pretty okay. terrifying you know what you're right you are you're right it, it is about her so the heavy so you, can, the you can't just say that without bringing up the context for all of these listeners come on so um uh, max um i'm a very very good friend <laughs> so max 
what, doing exactly what he's doing right now, which is pointing a knife, asked me, kind of like begged two, me. Two knives. <laughs> he's like, please, please, please. I need somebody to watch my store for me. Please. Oh, what was me? And I stepped up and I said, Max, I'm extremely busy that day. And I live an hour, four hours away, basically, in mm -hmm. traffic from San Antonio to Austin. It's four hours. Everybody knows that. I will watch the store for you. And Max said, I'm not worthy of you. And I said, no, 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 it's okay. So I was uh, clerking, vending, working. Working in the store by Thrill myself. Came. Yeah. Thrill came. <laughs> so I, was, I was working in the store. This fool actually trusted the whole establishment to me for a day. And I put my balls on every surface <laughs> in that store. Um, that probably... Hey, hey, buddy. Uh, you think I haven't ejaculated in that strill yet? That what I said is going to be edited out, but you, what you said will not be edited out. Really, you think just I spent no my context. wedding night, buddy? There'll just be no context. My in laws fill in town. <laughs> I, I go ahead. I've already said what I need to say. All right. So I offered to, uh, so I was working at the store and a huge group came in and a lady came up to the desk and she she's like i have a question and i was like yeah sure i walked up and she's like um why do you have jesus christ, max just cut himself why do you <laughs> jesus christ man <laughs> no, oh no exclusive to the patreon <laughs> you'll see horror author max Boo <laughs> cut himself with a fucking knife who could have um, saw that coming no nobody nobody at all Oh, wow. Do you need to take a break to handle that? Nah, it's fine. <laughs> Long story short, lady came up to me and said, why do you have Rebel Without a Cause, Re Rebel Without a Crew on in your bookstore <laughs> if it's only supposed to be a spooky bookstore? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm just hel helping a friend out. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I know. I just, it, there's nothing spooky in it. I'm like, sure, I guess, but he's directed horror movies. She's like, sure, but I think you guys are trying to be tricky. I'm like, tricky or whatever whatever she said i was like i'll let the owner know how did, she, didn't, uh, she didn't end up buying anything either well she was pissed she was pissed i want the listeners to know i have straight up cut my thumb open <laughs> we have not even begun talking about peeping tom yet <laughs> and we're being very voyeuristic right here we're just looking at a downward spiral of a man yeah wow i'm really surprised that happened <laughs> What happened Ooh. is I went to close the blade, but I didn't move my thumb, so I closed it on my thumb, and it just pinched it right open. You're, you're getting kind of pale. You're really, really pale. No, I'm just a white man. Okay. All right. I, you know. and like, do you go outside, and I'm specifically in Austin, and you're just like, oh my god, all these people are about to paint, faint. Yeah. Do they cut their thumbs open? Not not, not the, the thumbs open part, but there are a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, listen. Look at this tissue. All right, we, we're gonna pause. Do you no, want to pause? I, that is not comedic. If we pause, okay. I don't need it to be. I don't want you passing out. Listen, do you know how many patrons you're about to get? <laughs> I'm about to get negative too. Listen. All right. So tell me more about the bookstore. Um, what would you like to know? I mean, you've been in it. You've been employed yeah. at it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, so. First of all, if people wanted to order directly from you could they order books on the website or so we can do that with the books we've published mm -hmm. we'll in the process of making a website that has in stock everything we've published and everything just at the bookshop itself but that isn't quite done yet um the website's going to be ghoulishbooks.com if you go to that now it'll take you to the publishing website but eventually it will take you to the website that's both bookshop and publishing company that's it's funny you should say that because i happen to go on to perpetualpublishing.com uh forward slash faq forward slash and you have a question do you have a physical store oh and yeah I clicked on the little plus sign which turned it into say? a negative sign and it says not yet but we have aspirations of one day opening a bookshop in the san antonio wow. area stay tuned wow that's now, pretty let me uh, let me ask you something. Do you think that that's helpful for people who want to know if you have a physical bookstore? <laughs> no, <laughs> I haven't updated that in several years. Okay, well, no, because you do have, um, 
the, the people that are, are listed, uh, the ghoulish staff, you yeah, do have Frank. Not... Yeah. And you, you see, so you do have your fr- your dog, Frank. Yeah. I'm sure an intern and the, Conan um, O'Brien as an intern. The lady who's listed as doing publicity is no longer with us. The, like in life? <laughs> I mean, not in my life. Okay. So that needs to be updated as well. Yeah. Okay. Right. I can't believe how much I'm bleeding. It just I'm keeps still... coming out. No. So. Yeah. This is the first interview I've ever cut myself on. But but Have it won't get... be the last. I doubt it. Do you? You might you might end up liking it and just become a cutter. I'll be honest. This Trigger is warning. Pain... This is fucking painful. You you bleed for your art, baby. Hell yeah. All right. You're terrible at, at promoting. Listen. What else do you want to know? I have a bookshop. I publish books. I've sure. written some. You you ask me the question. I'll tell you the answer. Sure. Ghoulish Books, a bookshop in uh, the San Antonio area, open up in April. You yeah. guys, you guys have events at the shop. What yeah, sort of do. events do you have? We just some. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do a weekly uh writing club every thursday at seven o'clock unless something else is in the way we will do a writing club will anyone who's interested in writing could come and sit down and just do some quiet writing as a group and that i find can be productive for many people when surrounded by like like-minded uh people with the same interest because they see, oh, that feels since also writing, I, I'll get some done. And also it can be productive because you might have like, you might feel guilty if you just sit and you're not writing. So you kind of have to write. And then at the end, if you want to stand up and read something you've written lately, it could be anything that you might want opinions on. You could do that as well. And we listen and give opinions and thoughts and critiques. We also do a movie night, which I think you should talk about. Yeah, so every the last Saturday of every month, I hope uh, Max and Lori have been gracious enough to allow me to host a horror movie night uh, where we do free screenings. Well, they used to be free uh, until people started t- taking up the tickets and not showing up. So now we have to do uh, five dollars, but that goes towards your purchase of snacks or or books, all that sort of stuff. That's cool. But in the past, we have shown. Um, We've only this is only like the third month that we've done it, but in in the past two months we've shown all about evil for um, Pride Month, and then we did what was that movie that we did? The, the Autopsy first? of Jane Doe. The Autopsy of Jane Doe, which a little they, somebody actually brought a little kid to, and that little kid was crying in your bathroom. It was pretty <laughs> great. But to, was, to be to be completely upfront, we don't advertise the title ahead of time. Correct. So they didn't that. know what it was going to be. Yeah. Um, but we can't advertise the title. That's how we can get away with kind of doing this um, without um, getting sued. It's, you don't advertise the title and you don't directly profit from the movie itself. So like we do now charge five bucks, but that is a five dollar credit you can use at the bookshop. So it's not buying a ticket for the movie exactly. But if you don't do that, you can't come in. Yes, so stay away. Um, but so they we do that at the uh, the last Saturday of the, of, the, of the month. But either way, like it feels like you know, from all the people that I've interacted with 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 Ghoulish uh, Book Festival, with the Ghoulish Bookstore, people are, you know, you're 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 gaining like a community in the like San Antonio and Austin area of like these horror fans, and it's just it's just great to see and great to be a part of. Um, but with that said, I think Max and I are going to continue this conversation and other shit on the post show, uh, which is called the Sunday School Sessions. That's a Patreon exclusive. Um, uh, so if you're interested in supporting the show, uh, patreon.com slash myhorrorconfessional for that and other free st- other cool stuff. I in would meantime, like to promote one thing before we go to the movie, if that's yeah, cool. Yeah. I have a new magazine that just came out. It's called Ghoulish Tales. Issue one came out um, in july i don't know when this episode's going live but um okay 
Um, it's a magazine that features both fiction and nonfiction. Pretty happy with how it came out. And I think if you like, you know, fiction and nonfiction <laughs> in magazines, you're right. I suck at promoting myself. Foolish Tales is a magazine. It's spooky. It's sexy. It's a fun time. Also, if you write and you want to write for the magazine, we will open right now until the end of August. We pay 10 cents a build, which is pretty goddamn good payment nowadays. And you can go to Ghoulish Books to find info on how to submit and also um, a link to buy issue one. And how can they find you and support your work? Go to ghoulishbooks.com. Well, they could go to fuckmaxbooth.com if you revel. And if you want to hear the story about fuckmaxbooth.com, uh, find me at a convention and buy me a drink. <laughs> or patreon.com slash my horror professional because we're going to be talking about honey at the show with no oh. names. Okay. No names. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm already bleeding enough, man. <laughs> All, right. All right. So um, do you believe it's still bleeding? Because you cut yourself very wide open. Listen, I did. Do I need stitches? Just burn it. Just take a flame to it. Take a lighter to it. I, I'll do that on my Patreon show. All right, cool. All right, so uh, Max Booth III is here to confess his sin of never having watched Peeping Tom from 1960. Is that correct? I, that's correct, but no, it's not. Up I until have now. seen it. I've seen it. It's I great saw it. It's like two job. hours ago. Yeah. I bet you get it every episode. No, no, it's the first time I'm hearing about it. <laughs> you lie. So, so uh, all right. So what is the story around not having watched this movie? Have you never heard of it? Or I had, was it on I, your list for a while? I'm still, I'm still speaking. The question, the sentence wasn't done. <laughs> yes, please mute your mic. So why, why did you, why had you never seen this movie? Why I've never seen Peeping Tom, I don't know. I only recently, within the last um, one to two years, even found out about it being a movie. It sounded pretty cool. I anticipated it being way more um, perverted and um, just like depraved. So I was waiting because it's not in my head. It didn't seem like the type of movie I would want to just randomly play, like in the living room with the whole family around. Ended up being a bit way tamer than that. But I thought it was going to be pretty extreme. I don't know why I thought that for a movie put out in 1960. Maybe I didn't realize when it came out, but I just kind of thought it was going to be more um, graphic than when it was. So it was something I was holding off until the right time when I had like an ice bucket handy, I guess. So when it was when you wanted me to come back up on the show, I think I gave you a list of three titles, and that was one of them. And you picked yeah. that one. Why did you pick that one of the three I gave you? You know, I don't even remember what the other two were that you said, but I just know that I I, I had seen Peeping Tom before, and I thought like the the subject matter and the themes that were in it would just be really interesting to talk about. And then I thought, who's the most immature person that I could talk about that with? And I thought, oh. Max Booth third. He'll definitely play with a knife and cut himself. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll be violating like Patreon's terms of services <laughs> by posting this video of a man cutting himself. I hope you can isolate that clip so we can post it on social media as well. It's I have to kind of try to uh, isolate the audio and like amplify it. Here's some yeah. to see if you go. You know, yeah. that might it'll, work. Be, it'll be a good clip. Then you can say, "Watch the re watch him continue to bleed throughout the episode by clicking this link and supporting me on Patreon." Yeah. So um, that I think that. <laughs> so I, I think that's why uh, I chose it. It just seemed uh, I had seen it within the last within the last five years, and then you know the comparison with uh, Hitchcock, Psycho, and all. Oh yeah. Stuff. I just thought that we can really get into it. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. So. I guess let's go ahead and get into it here. One second. You okay? Yes, sir. I am looking at my notes. I have notes too, but I can't scroll on my phone now. Because you, my you can, you just don't want you just don't want to. There's a difference. Does this mean I'm handicapped now? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I can't use my thumb, man. This is, I would call this a handicap. <laughs> okay. Miguel wants not to comment on that. I not guess commenting he, on any of that. All right. He, so he likes to ignore the disabled. Interesting. Peeping Tom from 1960, uh, directed by Michael Powell. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen anything by him besides this? No, I haven't. Um, he, he has did, like, a few movies that looks they look pretty good. I haven't seen them. Um, yeah, he he's known um, for like the red. Is it? It's not a red shoe diaries, but the red shoes. Red shoes, right? Red shoe diaries. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I want to play that soon because I guess it's like a one of the best movies made about like dancing, like um, ballet dancing. And I think my wife would probably enjoy that. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Cause Lori, Lori is a, an instructor, right? Dance instructor. Yeah. Cool. And she grew up dancing until she was like 17. And then she blew out a knee doing something. Oof. That's when she stopped and she okay. just began teaching only. Um. And so, and written by Leo Marx, and it is starring Carl Heinz Bohm as Mark Lewis, and they never explain that German accent that he he's has. German. That's it. Yeah. Well, yes, but his father was English. The actual German. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. No, that's what I'm saying. But uh, if I'm, I'm movie, explaining it to you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Um, and then Anna Massey as Helen Stevens, Moira Shearer as Vivian, uh, Maxine Audley as Mrs. Stevens, uh, and a cast of characters. <laughs> what is this movie rated? Because I know like Jaws is, is like infamously rated PG. So I wonder what this could be rated. I think this was, it's not rated. Well, do they even have that type of system in the UK? No, I think it would be, this is even like pre-video nasties, I think. Yeah, definitely. It is. Video nasties it yeah, that one lady, I forget her name now, but the one, the lady in the U, the UK who led like the video nasty censorship, she would have fucking had a hell attack if she saw this movie. Well, I, that's a question I was going to ask you because there's two versions of it. There's the UK version and there's the American version. And I believe I, I saw it on Tubi. Me too. Uh, and and I, so we so then we saw the American version oh. because there was no nudity in this movie in our version, but in the UK version, there's nudity. Dude, do you know how pissed I was that there was no nudity in this movie? It's called Peeping Tom, and no one is naked. Yeah. So there was a different one with nudity? Yeah, so Millie, who's model, who's um, one of the uh, women who gets killed um, yeah. towards the end of it, she was naked right before she was killed. And yeah. so they, they reshot that scene for the American audience with her clothes when she was laying down. Mm -hmm. But she was the first woman in a british movie to be to appear naked like the first woman to appear naked in a british movie i should say but for oh. american audiences we didn't see that when did you might you might not know but when did like nudity happen in the u.s that i don't know let's see so like what first uh first u.s movie to feature all nudity can't type i'm in i'm in jeweled. Injured. That's the correct word for it. 1915. 1915, oh, yeah. I'm seeing a naked lady. But that's pornography. Is she more. playing tennis? Could you not watch porn while we're in it while I'm interviewing you, please? Can we? <laughs> no. Listen, I have this I have this homemade lube coming down my hand. What do you oh, want me Jesus to do? Jesus Christ. That sounds like uh something yeah. that somebody in your uh ghoulish discord would say. And so, if, so if you I, want, to, I did not come from a bog. Thank you. So, if you want to uh, have those types of conversations, you can join Max's Discord. How many Which, people are are in the Discord now? Almost nine hundred, and I should say it only exists because you randomly like nagged me into making one. I didn't want to, and I still regret doing it. It's too many people <laughs> every day. It's annoying. And now you have almost nine hundred, and I have nineteen people. <laughs> in my discord well so, the, the difference is i believe it's only patrons can go on yields right yes that's that and is mine true. is open to any fucking random bog psychopath yeah 
<laughs> that is true. Somebody who would use blood as lube. Um, that's going to be cut out of the uh, the regular podcast, but I can't edit videos. Uh, Why would you cut it out? What, what about it? it? Because it's very cut? disgusting. Um, this Why is am a type... I a guest? <laughs> yeah, last time you were on, I had to cut some shit as well. Don't be a don't be a coward. Leave okay. it in. It's fine. I am very much a coward. I'm very it's much a, a coward. I, I give you permission to leave everything in. Okay. I'm gonna the the um uh the thumb was funny. The the thumb for the video is gonna be you the picture of your thumb that's cut. Whoa. I uh, took a photo of my thumb bleeding. I'll send it to you if you want. Oh yes, please. I'll post and yeah, it's finally drying up, but holy hell, that played a while. I'm glad that you're feeling better. Do you need to take a break? Why? Okay. I just want to make sure. I want to make sure you're good. I want to talk about Peeping Tom. Man. All right. So let's talk about Peeping Tom. I know you have some notes, so let me know. I have a lot of notes. So when something comes up. All right. So you want, do you want to talk about the Hitchcock stuff? Uh, I was going to save it for the end, but we can talk about okay. it now. Okay. Let's save it. Let's save Here, it for the here's end. Here's the thing. Sounds I found good. in the last two or three episodes that I've said, oh, let's save it to the end. And then we forget about it. And then I'm editing the goddamn podcast. I'm like, fuck, I forgot to talk about it. So let's just fucking talk about it now. Okay. So I think it is insane that both this movie and Psycho, both of them made by a British filmmaker, were released on the same fucking year. 1960 yeah yeah both movies came out the same time both of them made by a brit one of those goes on to become one of the most classic movies of all time the other one basically ruins this guy's career yeah what the fuck and and i think that this peeping tom is a lot smarter than psycho is i mean psycho is a great fucking movie i absolutely love psycho alfred hitchcock is an amazing director Legendary director, one of the best of all time. I don't, I can't really say that about uh, Michael Powell because I haven't seen a lot of his stuff. But um, I think this one trusts its audience mm -hmm. a lot more than Psycho does, and yeah. where you get that whole end. See, um, spoiler alert! But if you haven't seen fucking Psycho, but uh, it's that whole ending, mm -hmm. that last scene where they tell you everything that happened, and you're like, I, you feel insulted. Right. Yeah, the endings don't even fucking compare when you have these two movies lined up. It, um, Peeping Tom is so much, much, so much of an improvement of Bill Psycho, I think, especially in the ending. Yeah, and the other thing is Psycho being black and white versus this being color. Like, I don't know. There, there could be a lot of a lot to say about that. Like, how, how do you feel like the the impact of black and white? Versus like the impact of color when it comes to like fear or uh, even like um, settings like that. I don't know. It, it's uh, it felt obviously different, but in, I, I was struggling to find out in what way, you know? Well, I mean, this came out when movies were being shot both ways and wasn't like atypical to do black and white although i think the i think it felt like okay we were moving on from that so maybe it was strange for him for uh, hitchcock to do black and white but i mean it makes the blood really effective more than anything i think in psycho the way the, the chocolate still the looks, chocolate too. yeah yeah but um i think it one of the reasons that like psycho became this iconic classic might be because it's black and white because and also like just the setting itself because like psycho feels like the past almost right because a we have the black and white but it also takes place like in this almost gothic looking castle on a hill next to this little motel motel but peeping tom billy vibrant also takes place in a city right like in a busy mm -hmm. population and that seems a little upfront and like it could happen to you almost. And I wonder if something like with that affected like people just not vibing with it at all because it was something they hadn't seen. And also, will Psycho and Peeping Tom will so different? Psycho is mostly from the point of view of the victims, right? We are the ones getting killed. But in Peeping Tom, we all in the point of view of I know his name's not Tom, but I can't think of his name. We are in the, the point of view of Tom, 
<laughs> the peeping tom and we as an audience will now like almost mark held um accountable right because like we will watching the killings happen from tom's point of view as he kills people we become the person who's killing them and i wonder if that was like super like just like um anti whatever the fuck was going on back in the 60s i wonder if like any movie like that had been made and maybe that's why it wasn't so held with such high um acclaim yeah so what you're saying is like the the uh a lot of the uh people who saw it what powell said was that he thought that the audience was incapable or unwilling to understand that voyeurism was not only like a byproduct of the film business but it's but it's also its very essence and it was dealing with a complicated subject so directly and, and like without hesitation um powell and mark succeeded in making one of the most accomplished meta films of all time um it said it's been praised for psychological complexity which incorporates the self-reflexive camera as a plot device as well as the themes of child abuse, sadomasochism, and scopophilic fetishism. Uh, on the surface, the film is about the Freudian relationships between the protagonist and, respectively, his father and his victims. Um, however, several fit, uh, critics argue that the film is as much about the voyeurism of the audience as they mm -hmm. watch the protagonist's actions. So, real quick, let me just take it back to, and if you haven't seen this movie, I, ju I just want to give you like a foundation of what the movie's about. So the film revolves, yeah. I've seen it. Thanks. Appreciate it. That's a good joke. Second time. Uh, the film revolves around a serial killer who murders women while using a portable film camera to record their dying expressions of terror, putting his footage together into a snuff film used for his own pleasure. Its title derives from the expression Peeping Tom, which describes a voyeur. So um, when we're talking about like voyeurism of the audience, maybe they were just not ready for that, right? They weren't they were ready to be made feel uncomfortable about what yeah. they're watching. It it turns out we will the peeping times all along. So uh, when we were talking about this movie, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you said that uh, you were going to look into the history of peeping times. I didn't do that. Famous peeping toms throughout history. I um. So what'd you come with? I didn't do that, but I did tell you. I think I have done that before, and I have. If you go to my podcast, Ghoulish, I have a whole episode about royal uh, peeping toms. It's not called that. It's the V world, which I am afraid to pronounce right now because I haven't said it in a while. Royal royal. Voyeur. Yeah, thank you. It was an episode with Michael David Wilson. And Bob Pastorella, I did that because they had a book about that, about the Peeping Tom, basically. So I've already done the research. I forgot it all. But I've done it once. I wasn't going to do it again. Okay. I, I can understand that. But okay. maybe don't tell me you're going to do something and then not do it. As I mean, I can, if I recall, I had a, tr I think maybe I had issues trying to find enough like comedic stuff to talk about when I Googled around. Yeah. So the, the, the etymology of peeping so. Tom is, uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you just talked over you. I, I apologize. That was very rude of me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut that I'm out. I'm used to it. <laughs> so the etymology of peeping Tom is uh, um, the legend of Lady Godiva. as She was riding through a town or whatever. She was naked. I forgot why she didn't have any clothes on. And she told her guards to tell everybody to turn away. Mm -hmm. And this one tailor, his name was Tom, didn't turn away and looked at her. And I think he probably, she probably ended up kill, having him killed or whatever. But that's yeah. where peeping Tom came from. This sounds familiar. I believe I talked about this on my podcast. Listen, quit trying to get people to stop listening to this episode. Ghoulishpod.com. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Sick. Um, you actually recorded an episode for your podcast earlier today, right? Yeah. It's gonna go live tomorrow, which when this which doesn't mean anything to anyone listening to this episode. It will um, be live Monday, it'll be July live. 24th. Yeah, it'll be live. Yeah. yeah, it's an episode about haunted houses with um Nadia Belkin and Julia Rios. Get a kid episode. Great, yeah. The, um the 
ghoulish podcast is a lot of fun. I, I enjoy the people that you have on there. Um, message, plug, plug for the podcast. Good. I thought we just did a plug. <laughs> you have to keep going. No, I was going to insert a plug for the for your podcast. Um, oh, okay. Like cool. a little, but no, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So your Tom. notes. So look, listen here, guys. I'm going to go down. Yes. Our audience, listen. I had a certain. You guys know what I do with this podcast. Who are you talking to? The, my audience. You know what I normally <laughs> do, but trying to wrangle Max into talking about what you want to talk about is like trying to catch a greased pig, right? What am I distracting you from? What? How am I derailing this? So instead, you want, well, I'm just going to hand the reins no. over to Max. No, I'm, I'm muting this. No, no, no. Continue. <laughs> so i'm not I, we're just watch the movie it's a great movie but we're just going to talk about the cool stuff that we saw in the movie we're not going to go line by line scene by scene for the movie so max you said you brought some notes i do have notes but you have notes as well so i'll do a note then you do a note okay right let's back do that. my question is is this one of the is this a slashel is this movie a slashel because i think it might be and it might be one of the phil slashels that will made Question, comment? Was that a question or a comment? Both. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this was one of the first slashes. I think there were some uh, other aspects of it that were were done in previous movies, but like for example, using the view from a from a camera, you know, the camera uh-huh. view that was used in a couple other movies. But like, and, and there's a movie. <laughs> there was a black and white movie that came out in the '40s that I'm struggling to remember the name of right now that was actually women in a like in a sorority they have a reunion and they got they kind of get killed one by one but that's more like um um and then there were none sort of you know where nice. this has and then there were none so this says more of like this yeah. is like proto slasher for sure um but yeah um, that, that was- to be completely up front every movie is shot through a film lens that's how we watch them but what we'll what we'll saying is if there's a camera in the movie that we will watching things from because every movie you watch <laughs> the camera that's how, right. that's how motion pictures were made baby you're right otherwise it would be just like an audio podcast which sounds like it's a nightmare cool. to edit yeah just don't edit it um I thought for so my first note was the opening shot of the street was like surreal to me. So the opening shot was him on a street looking at a sex worker, but we don't see that. It's a point of view from him. Okay. Uh, and I don't very, handle this. It's very like technicolor. All the, the 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 colors are very bright, very vivid. Mm-hmm. And then he goes up to her, and and then she says two quid or whatever you know like and then and then he follows her into the house and then he ends up ki- uh killing her then but yeah that first shot was very surreal it looked like it was a, obviously on a set but i just i just loved it it was a great start for the movie should we do the whole we can delete this and do it again should we do the podcast with um crazy british accents you go first All right. do a cockney accent What's the difference? I have to be like cocky about it, right? A cockney accent, like hello, governor, like that. I wish my cock went down to my knee. Can you imagine? It'd yeah. <laughs> be awful. Be cutting my cock open all the time with knives. Hate myself. <laughs> Sleep better. <best>. Uh, what <laughs> is your what's your next note, Max Booth? Um, it just says educational books and i know what that means now i wasn't sure for a second but what is the shop that he like freelances at is it just a newspaper shop like a magazine stand what is this yeah it's like uh, the equivalent of a magazine stand in the united states yeah so they sell um nude mags uh, skin um not flicks what would it, what would you call it skin skin rags 
they sell phonographic <laughs> <laughs> magazines mm-hmm. um, on the sly. And when they package them up, they put them in these envelopes labeled uh, educational books. And I thought that was pretty funny. I laughed. Yeah. So the, uh, um, what is it, Carl? Yeah. No, Mark. Sorry. So Mark works in the movie industry, but he um, sidelines. He's got a side hustle um, shooting pic- pornographic pictures at at one of these um, newsstands, news or you know, bookstore. The fucking yeah, good no schoolish bookstore. We say it's pornographic, but there's no nudity or sex happening in any of these clips. Well, in the version we saw, there wasn't. Yeah. But in the British version, there are. They they show nudity like in in the pictures and stuff like that. Why so, didn't? Why wasn't I filmed? I didn't realize it either until after we saw it. Until after I saw it, so. <laughs> I probably sound like a creep by being out, <laughs> outraged by this. But I just well, feel no. like if your movie is called Peeping Tom, you gotta have some nudity in it. You need mill graphic stuff happening, right? And like nobody wants to see a censored version of something. Well, th- let me take that back. There's very little that I want to see a censored version of, like you cutting yourself open. I want to see a censored censored version of that. Why? But like in general, I, I I don't want to see something that's censored. Yeah. Um. So, but but anyway, so he works. Uh, he moonlights. That's what I was looking for. He moonlights as a photographer for, um, you know, like a pornographic photographer. Yeah. And um, the place that he works at is above that that shop. <laughs> what's and, the uh, what's the thing his boss says about the photos? The the one the magazine people always buy is the magazine you know, on the front cover is a lady without a front cover. Is that the quote? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you watch this today as well? I did. Okay, I did. Yeah. Good. And then um and then he says, so the pictures you take should be like my my covers. Right. There shouldn't there shouldn't be any covers on the women, basically. Mm-hmm. He wants to see the titties, is what he's saying. Whereas what what um Mark is going for is maybe a little bit more taste tastier, tasteful. Taste not tastier, you. tasteful. <laughs> Excellent. Tasteful, not tasteless. I believe his name is Tom, by the way. <laughs> no, it, it is Mark. <laughs> it's right in the title. You know what's is uh frustrating is when a movie doesn't use the name of the movie in the movie. They use it quite a bit in this movie. They don't say Peeping Tom. Yes, they do. How many times? Probably three. Damn it. All right. That's, that's fair. All in one scene, too. It's the scene where he's talking to that psychologist, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, ask, right. You're, okay. Yeah, they say Peeping Tom. Wow, you, you turned very quickly. You didn't even try to convince me anymore. Uh, so all you right. said I was right. You're right. You're right. Anyway, so he he's at that shop. Uh, and then somebody walks in and he's like, oh, like, he's kind of like, I'm not, I'm just really here to browse sort of thing. And then he asked uh, a friend of mine kind of said that uh, I can get some, some materials here. And the guy's like, yeah, this is what you want. And he shows him a box, full, a book of women, like Mitt Romney would say, right? Book full yeah. of women. You don't get that. Then he begins haggling, which I find funny. Have you ever haggled for, pornography? for pornography? No. Have no, you ever I'm... haggled for anything? Yeah, I have You've gone to like a flea market or something, and like I don't want to pay this much for a peach. Not a peach, not a peach. No, I have haggled for some stuff, but like I'm not, I'm not the best at it. I don't want to really enjoy doing it. I want to pay people what they think they're worth, and if yeah. I don't think you're worth that, I'm not going to pay for it. But I, ha- I haven't. I've been on the other side, like at conventions, where people try to do it with me. I'm like, no. Yeah, that's terrible. Like, the, not the at a price convention. Is on, the price is on that. Well, like I mean, I've done plenty of garage sales, and they try to do that, and it always upsets me. Like, no, it's just cheap enough. Pay what okay. have listed. It'll but be. a garage sale, I would understand. A garage sale, you're expected to haggle. No. That's part of the fun of. Going I've s- I've spent time coming up with the prices, and you respect my decision to leave the garage. The best thing that's ever happened to me at a garage sale is I was uh, I was sitting in my garage watching the uh, p- potential patrons go around and browse, and a man walked up to me. <laughs> this is absolutely true. He said, "Are you Max Booth?" And I went, "Yeah." I thought, "Oh my god!" Uh, that, my immediate thought was, "Is this like a fan of my books? Did he just recognize me?" 
he said, okay, great. He handed me an envelope and he had, I was, I was being sued. A million dollars. <laughs> True. It was from that, I was involved in a crash and then they were suing me. Oh, that's right. I was fucking sued at a garage sale. How do they know that was happening? I don't know. Maybe just odd timing, but it was really. Did you try to haggle with him? He did. I said, uh, how about 500,000? <laughs> so are you at privy to say what happened with that suit? I mean, the insurance just took care of everything. I don't, I mean, they will pay money, not a million, but they will pay something. I didn't have to pay directly. It just came out of the insurance. Okay. What I was going to say is you can say that you were sued for every penny you had and please buy some books from him so that he could feed his two dogs. I'm bleeding to death. Please help me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so when, so he, he buys the whole book, he yeah. buys a whole book of it. Like, can you imagine how embarrassing, what a world we live in where now, like if I had to go to a store and buy nude pictures off of people, I don't think I'd ever buy pornography. I would never masturbate again. No, I mean, well, I would, draw, I, would I, I can maybe draw my own. You know, I don't think I would buy it. Would you draw um, it on your hand? No, it's too much blood. Okay. Um, are you at? Um, are you comfortable uh, talking about Silton? things we talked about recently involving pornographic magazines and finding them about your experience <laughs> yeah not, yours? Right no, not mine no oh, okay um i uh when i was a uh, teen we were floating around various uh, residences and sometimes we would stay at my grandma's house in hammond indiana and that is real my um one of my brothers used to live mostly in the basement, but when we were staying at the time, he was moved out already. So I was uh, just exploring the basement and I decided to, I don't know what made me like lift up this panel in the ceiling of the basement. Maybe I saw it was slightly loose. So I, uh, I pushed it up and I found a stack of old, dusty, smelly uh, Playboys. And they were, you know, sticky and just really gross. I just thought I would shield that on the podcast. That That's like a rite of passage for uh, younger brothers to find their older brother's stash of porn. Yeah. Um, not the same story that I recounted to you, but a, a different one. Where it was, I, I found a Playboy. No, Penthouse? Yeah, Penthouse. Penthouse yeah. had the letters, right? Yeah. Just thinking about Playboy has gotten Miguel... Stupid little distracted. It's getting hot in here. Uh, Penthouse had the letters. It was Penthouse Forums, right? Uh, I remember that. And I think they had, I think they had a magazine that was just Penthouse Forum. Yeah. Like it was, and I can't think of what I'm trying to say. There was Penthouse, which had all the pictures and a little bit of Penthouse Forum. And then there was Penthouse Forums, which was kind of the opposite, had Penthouse Forums. With a little bit of pictures, regardless. Yeah. I think it was I think it was a penthouse form one. I found a copy of, of my brother's and I ended up taking it to school because that's what you do when you're a little kid and you find porn. And I showed it to some friends thinking I was cool. And then I got caught by the teacher. Yeah. And she didn't take it away, but she's like, put that away, whatever. And she was gonna call my parents, which I didn't care because my parents didn't speak English. So we called the yeah. house. I mean shit. Yeah. And but I ended up throwing it away. In a in a gut, uh, not a gutter. Uh, fucking, fucking Betty Wyatt's the rules checking off. <laughs> no um, dumpster in a dumpster yeah, behind yeah. A, a dumpster behind a bakery by my house. Anyway, so <laughs> it's just a rite of passage with little boys to find like porn. But was I that the never... first uh, pornography you ever saw? How'd you find it? Can't recall. I don't even recall. I mean, it was like probably under my brother's bed or something, something like that. Like. I don't recall the exact um, issue. Do no, you, the ex do you, do you recall it. the filth pornography you ever used? Hmm. I mean, this is a peeping Tom episode. So yeah, you got to get a bit tawdry. Let's peep. I can um, go. I can go with mine. It was um, 
<laughs> the Wikipedia page, filmography. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So it was a um like a like a gif on it of just like some like the Phil Stabil rebuilding of a naked woman that they just had playing on the page. And I thought, whoa, this won't give me a virus if I look at it. And I was hooked. So did you <laughs> repeatedly go to that website? Was that like one of your was it a yeah. bookmarked? Okay. Yeah, my PSP. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. So poor, I, I was thinking like um pornographic magazine or videotape, whatever, but even before that, we had my my dad got I think it was called a black box or the the, yeah. the box where you would steal cable basically. Mm-hmm. And we didn't get the Playboy channel. Wait. The Playboy we got the Playboy channel, but it was scrambled, so you couldn't see what it was. But every now yeah. and then you would see a nipple or something like that, but you did get the audio. Yeah. So you can hear the audio and then every now, every three or four Imagine. seconds, maybe perhaps see a nipple or something like that. That was, so that was the first. Yeah. And then that was also the first time I ever caught my, my by my dad. <laughs> yeah, I, snuck, I got I snuck down to the middle of the night. Like, I don't know what time of the night, but whatever. Went down to uh, to watch the TV to try to find that channel or whatever, and then t- turned the channel on, and then all of a sudden, hear from behind me, "Go, go to your room." I was like, "What the fuck?" My dad was sleeping on the couch because they must have got into a fight or some shit. <laughs> Were you like in the process? I don't think I had even. I think I just because yeah. if I was in the process, that means he would. No, I had just turned the TV on. He probably he would wait it. until you finished. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> He is that what, is that what you mean? <laughs> um, yeah. I also recall, you know, the website Newgrounds? No. New, new it, grounds? Yeah, it was like right. a, a website to play games on Flash. So all those Flash games. Okay. I, they, had, yeah. they had like a 18 plus section full games. And I recall finding some of those games and I was like, whoa. This isn't a game. This is something else. There's a there's an age difference between us as we all describe going heel. Um, <laughs> but there was wasn't like, an age verification. You just lie. You Max Booth is admitting on I've, recorded I've, audio. I, I, I committed fraud. Yes. Wow. But um, even if like that that was advertisers thing. use that information to advertise to you and you lied to them. Yeah. Even if like i don't think i had the opportunities like other kids would have had because back before i was a teen just like a, a child living in, an, in like a house we all lived in the living room so it wasn't like i had many chances to go and find uh pornography we were yeah. just all in the same room <laughs> the frustrating thing uh everybody that, that you'll know about max is that max just turned 30 and so <laughs> He, uh, all of this shit that he's accomplished by the time he turned 30, uh, I haven't accomplished even a quarter of that. And so when he insults me by saying we're from a different generation, it just makes it hurt a little bit more. Well, I, I only said that because it seemed amusing that both of Australia is about encountering pornography. Well, vastly different. I mean, you all tv static i was a video game on a computer that involved me doing puzzles to delete <laughs> sections of a body wait a minute wait a minute i was just hanging out with you on friday and you yeah. were watching game shows yeah that's right is this some sort of I don't do you know. get off on watching game shows <laughs> only classic concentration listen listen classic <laughs> concentration is a great game show I defy anybody to find a better game. So that was, it's. Uh, I mean, Jeopardy, participation. Only Connect. Even your man, your boy from Jeopardy, Alex Trebek, was on it because he. Realized yeah, I think he realized this is scalable. Let's no. move on to Jeopardy. Right, right. Off the, we're off the rails here. Um, I thought you were going to say off the record. <laughs> like why? Yeah. All right. So, what were we talking about before? So with Peeping Tom, and we kind of talked about this already, of it being a slash roll, but I love how, like, the POV through the camera, like, it reminds you of, say, like, Halloween looking through the mask. It's mm-hmm. pretty dope. Pretty cool. Yeah, we already talked about that. 
<laughs> it was just my great, next note. Great note but great the note. note after that says, Bill Fay present snuff film. Let's talk about that. Let's just talk about that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So you're you're uh he meets his neighbor, or his neighbor kind of meets him, right? Like he she goes to him. He meets and- his tenant. We should say he is, slash the, he is the landlord of this building. Yes, everyone else who lives in this building is a, a tenant of his. Yeah. Yet somehow she didn't know that. Well, because he, he because he says that he, later on in the conversation, he says, "Oh, I hope the the rent isn't too high because if it is, I'll tell the agency to lower it." So okay. they go through an agency. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, so he meets his uh, neighbor slash tenant and it's her birthday. She gives him a piece of cake and then the next day or whatever. Same day, she, same day he gives her a present? No, it's the same day. It's the next day. No, no, no. We'll, we'll jump in ahead. Oh, I see what you're saying. So she comes up. She's like, oh, you make movies? Let me see one. It would be such a great birthday present. And he goes, okay. And he debates showing her a snuff film that he's in the process of making, which I think would be a great birthday gift. Instead, he <laughs> shows her a, um, a video made by his dad of him as a child being chill-mented. <laughs> she is uh, freaked out. She's like, what is this? What it's and it's not just one; it's a reel interspliced with like multiple, like times that his dad recorded him and was just torturing him because his dad wanted to see like what how do kids react to fear? Yeah, it's it's also a great way for uh, exposition. I thought because you don't really think of it as exposition until you begin doing a podcast later on, but that's what it is. It's, it's a great way to tell us like what his childhood was like. And his dad was a fucking creep. His dad was a, a scientist who would do these experiments. And it kind of reminded me of like when I was a kid and I used to think, well, one day I might have kids and I would think of funny things I could do to them. Like what if I taught them mustard with ketchup and ketchup was mustard? What kind of man would that become? Like that. We'll, we'll think along the same lines with the scientist who's like, what kind of man would my son become if I threw a lizard on him sometimes? <laughs> and, and I think what kind of made it worse for like the British cinema or the British audience and kind of why the movie was kind of reviled when it first came out is that these like many movies within the movie, the director Powell played himself. He was behind the camera and his actual son was the younger version oh. of the of the character of of Mark, and so <laughs> that's hilarious. An even extra layer, yeah, of like meta like commentary on voyeurism, and shit, you know, yeah. Because some- you are now as our audience as us, we are now privy to like literal like voyeurism sort of thing, you know. What were these experiments though? One of them was throwing a lizard on his son and just watching how he reacts. And the one of the most frequent ones he would do would just like shine a light in his eyes as he's asleep. Yeah, it just seems I mean, annoying. Like it's not like oh, I'm going to create this this fucking strange guy. It's just, I'm just going to annoy a child. Well, then later on in the movie, uh, like I think it's the last scene of the movie, we he like starts flipping on because we find out that there were the, every room was miked, and yeah. so we start hearing like he starts playing, but we don't see it as the, as the uh, audience but he starts playing all these videos oh no maybe it was just audio but he starts playing all this audio audio of him being tortured Mm -hmm. and i think perhaps even there was some sexual abuse going on there you know i I wouldn't put it past this this uh father you know torturing his son um i i have a note that says the dad's experiment of wanting to document a child growing up is basically what everybody does now on social media pretty deep thinking don't you think <laughs> that is you wouldn't think somebody who cut themselves uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the podcast recording would have such a deep thought but you did you yeah. kind of recovered yeah that's a i hadn't even thought about that um and then i know that people have been cautioned about like not putting your child like your child hasn't given you consent yeah. to be recorded and for you to put them up on the uh, on the internet but also there's weird fucking people in the world. They I am. Um, once you put it on the internet, they can do whatever the fuck they want with that. You know. Not that long ago, I posted like a 
a thing in the ruled section of my disk field saying, hey, by the way, this is not like a private space. Anyone can see it. Don't post photos of your kids. Not a great idea. A few people will not the biggest fan of me saying that. They got a little defensive with me, but it's like I grew up with a different internet than some people did. Like I would not post a photo of a child anywhere online because you could do anything with that. A, you just get a creep who's going to masturbate to it. We're going to take that photo and do like a Photoshop job of like that child doing something unspeakable. I mean, you just you don't want do that stuff public. Yeah. Or, I mean, there's that's like the worst case scenario, right? But also you're just like using your child to get fake internet points. Yeah. Or, you know, or, you know, try to monetize them, you know, on TikTok or whatever. It's just, just it, be, I don't a, have be a, a nil mil person and do that with a dog like I do. Yeah. That's no problem. <laughs> Dogs can't consent. Okay. And I'm stopping that line of thought right there. It's and true. We're, Animals we're gonna, can't consent, which means be, be good. Be nice, it's be nice against the law. Yes. To do anything. Yeah. Cows can consent. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Cows can't consent, and yet we're we are milking them. In fact, they constantly say no, don't they? <laughs> no, no. That's stupid. Uh, moving on. Oh, I. So we have to talk about his like his place, right? Because we see it when he's showing this lady around. He has like a. Is it called a red room? What's the room that the photographs will taking? It's not called a red room, is it? Will they hang and develop? Dark room. That's it. Ow. Do not snap your thumbs after you've cut yourself. That was really painful. I think I reopened my wound. Um, <laughs> so he's showing Phil around, and finally they go to a place to begin playing the movie we were just talking about. Did you notice know this fucking guy, Tom, has somehow bought or made his own directing chill with his name on it it said tom on the directing chair no it had whatever little bullshit name he's using <laughs> in the movie okay uh mark mark Billis. yeah no, i yeah, didn't yeah. notice that i didn't yeah, notice his first and last name so i thought he has made this or he put in like a request someplace to get one made and sent to him really funny i thought He's also murdering women. <laughs> but, what a, but that's what unrelated. No. I just it's funny to imagine the process of him getting that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had one when I was on set with my movie, but I wasn't allowed to take it home. I thought it was really rude. It had my name and everything on it. Are they just going like they recycle and they take the names off and add a new oh, one? Okay. Okay. I was pissed. Yeah. You could have scraped off the name and like snorted it or something maybe if it said like screenwriter it just said executive producer which i don't think is that impressive but yeah. if it had said like screenwriter on it maybe yeah oh throwing shade to all the executive producers that listen a, to this it's podcast. a meaningless credit man it means nothing all right well, one <laughs> thing i noticed though is he, so he showed her these home videos of himself being tortured by his father and like he, he even like records when he sees his mother's dead on this bed and even the funeral I have that. That sort of, that's a yeah. note as well i was gonna oh do you have a sub you, are you going to send with that yeah Go ahead. and then she's like asking what the fuck is all this basically and then he takes out his camera and starts recording her reaction to that mm-hmm. so like i don't know that was just like he was like getting he was gratifying himself like he was getting off on seeing her reaction to his pain. The movie's really subtle because you think if they were making the same movie like now, he would probably like have one hand in his pants as he was filming Google, don't you think? But that's basically what was happening without actually seeing it happen. Right. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of I mean, he grabs the shaft and like strokes it when he's yeah. pulling out. So the the murder weapon his weapon is a penis, basically. It's really phallic. Which, which, I mean, like, you can argue sore knives when they, like, the way that they're filmed yeah. in, in horror movies, sore knives. But but uh, uh, from a tripod uh, that he sets his camera on, he, one of the uh, tripod legs, um, he unsheathes it, pulls back the skin, and it's, and it, and it's uh, a point. It's like a knife or something. Like, Would you call this weapon uncircumcised or circumcised it's 
Well, he uncircumcised. Detachable. It. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be great if you had that option for. You don't have that option. You can't just take it off and on. <laughs> Are you uncomfortable? <laughs> Moving on. Moving um, on. But but yeah. So I don't I don't know where that thought started. I have but... a comment about the, the the photos of the dead mom and stuff. I wanted to talk about that briefly. It's gonna get a little awkward. But last year when my mom died, I encountered this thing. Well, two of my brethren separately reached out to me asking if they want if I wanted to see photos. Both of them took separately of Phil after she died. And I thought that was the strangest fucking thing anyone could ask me. A, why would you take a photo of that? And B, why would you think other people wanted to see photos of that? So I wondered, like, am I the the odd one here? Well, I think that's really strange. Well, is that just a thing people do? Like, obviously, the Peeping Tom's dad did it. It blew me away when I saw that in the movie. So, A, I'm always sorry to hear about your mom's death. Um, well, that's good. <sighs> B, it, it it brought back something is like I, I don't know when this happened, but years ago, on a, like three different phones before the phone I have right now, I somehow connected my Amazon photos. It might have done it of itself because I never use Amazon photos, but whatever. All the pictures that I had on my roll on my camera, on my yeah. phone, I'm sorry, got uploaded to Amazon. Okay. Amazon photos. And then and then nothing ever happened. So the last time it was updated was like 2018, right? Yeah. But then we, uh, I bought an Amazon TV like four years ago and I put it in my room. And it, you have to log in to Amazon. It's fucking stupid, right? But what that means is it now randomly when it's about to go to sleep or whatever, it randomly shows pictures from that one time yeah. upload. And these weren't yeah. pictures that I chose to upload. These are so these they're the worst pictures you can imagine. It's like random stuff like me accidentally taking a picture of myself like I'm some boomer, right? Like looking at the camera or like <laughs> I took a picture of a price tag to show Hillary. Just the most random stupid shit, right? Yeah. Imagine if that happened with your brothers <laughs> and like terrible. this picture of your your mother's yeah. passed away just shows up on their yeah. Amazon TV. That's the yeah. first thought I had about that. Second of all, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Why, or third of all, I should say, why I, I had my, my brother passed away in 2019. Yeah. I was there when it happened. Um, I was the second person to see that. Um, I didn't think of taking a picture. You didn't pull your phone out and document I didn't it? Pull my, I, I, I don't understand. What a crazy instinct for both of them to do that. Yeah. And I then to know. ask if somebody wanted to see. Yeah. That's really weird. That's really odd. Were they insulted when you said no? Not only did I say no, I said, why the fuck would you have taken a photo? And they were a little offended when I was like, why would you do that? What's wrong with you? The, the thing is, though, um, trying to put this in a tasteful way, your mother died in a, in a terrible accident. Yeah. Whereas like, so... Like my brother was very, very sick, and I knew he was going to pass away. And he was yeah. in his in his bed, surrounded by loved ones. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's like just horrific. Yeah. So, with my mom, she was also surrounded by many people except me because I was in a different state. But she, it wasn't like immediate. She was like oh, yes, unresponsive right. for like three yeah, that, days. Okay. So she right. had people in the that. hospital. And I guess they just took lots of photos throughout that whole time as she was in the bed. And then after right. the fact as well. And it's like, why? I forgot about why it. is that the last thing you want to see? Yeah, that's to die. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand the 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 peeping the toms, process man. That. Oh we, shit. We will not peeping toms. Our brevels might be. Did your tell them never to upload photos to Amazon photos and they're they're I don't think in. well one of them. He's not going to listen to this because he doesn't know what a podcast is, I don't think. Thankfully. He would never be able to do that. For one thing, until she passed, she was helping pay my brother's phone bill every month. He would pay, he would give all the cash and she would 
do it and pay it online because he doesn't understand how to do that. And mm. when she passed, the um, the process of figuring out how to pay for a phone online was so complicated, he threw his phone away. And now he just doesn't have a phone. If you want to get a hold of him, you have to message him on Facebook and he will respond to you on an old laptop he has. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So I don't think grid. there's any danger of that happening. <laughs> He's <off Okay>. the <laughs> He also gets oh yeah, fuck it. He also gets paid on the table, so he doesn't have to repeal anything to taxes. Okay. Yeah, and what's um, the social security number? He also still pays child support for kids who will way past 18. And when he tried to stop doing that, his ex-wife said, if you do that, I'm going to tell the IRS that you have this job that you don't pay taxes on. So he's being blackmailed into continuing to pay child support. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he pays child support for kids that aren't his. And I was like, oh, no, shit. he has five children and only two of them now like actual kids about the same mom others are like weasels or what do you mean you said they're actual kids as opposed Instead to like... of above 18 ah okay. adults i'm not gonna say that <laughs> okay all right all right well, um <laughs> one of the notes i had is um oh no so we, we talked about him stroking the 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 tripod like it's his dick yeah um then there's the scene of so he works as a camera operator, right? Uh, one of the things I saw about this movie is that it's a great representation of like film, the filmmaking process. Yeah, his uh, job, to be clear, is he helps focus the lens. Which sounds That's weird. His... Is that is that still a job? I was going to ask you because you you made a film. You were in the process of making a film. I uh, think they do more than just focus now because digital is probably easier to focus and it probably doesn't require being a solo job but you can see him like throughout the movie using the the tape measurement i think that has to do with like how to how what level to focus it on like when we did my movie we, it wasn't that detailed okay because obviously like the camera they will, yeah they were using actual film and we didn't do that oh you shot digitally yeah. Okay. Um, but yes, I agree. This movie is great to watch. It's like the, the technological side of creating a film. I was just hypnotized by all of that. I loved watching just the step-by-step -step process of it all. Yeah, even down to like when he's uh, he marks where she's standing. You know, that's great. You know, the, the, um, just the, the process of filmmaking um you, you kind of see in here and one of the at the end of this episode whenever that happens um i'm going to be suggesting a movie to you and I, it's another horror movie that shows a lot of the filmmaking process so i'm really excited um to Are see you if sure i haven't it seen it oh okay we're, I might gonna have. See. we're gonna see so, um, um, so that was my that was my note how about you what's the note you have well, I have a note, but before we do that, I was looking at the Wikipedia page today and I saw a thing where um, Scorsese has said that this movie and also Fellini's Eight and a Half are like the best two movies about filmmaking. I haven't seen any Fellini movies, although I have a box set of everything he's made. I just haven't opened it yet. So I'm excited to check that one out as well. I've seen Eight and a Half. It's, it's pretty good. good. Yeah, cool. it's good. Like, I've seen some Fellini. I'm forgetting what the what the other ones I've seen of him are, but yeah, I've seen Fellini. I mean, uh, yes, I've seen Eight and a Half. Um, yeah, so uh, Scorsese, right? You said Scorsese, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Scorsese was like a huge reason why this film kind of got a resurgence, because like we said, when he first came out, it was derided and and nobody, uh, you know, said it was basically filth. And then uh, Scorsese loved the movie. And when he uh -huh. started to become bigger, he would show it at his film festivals and he would talk about it. And he would say that Powell was an inspiration for him, that sort of thing. And then people started picking it up and showing it at film, film festivals. And then it got released on uh, VHS and DVD and Blu-ray. And I was, so now it's, just, now it's cons widely considered one of the best horror movies. What? It's a widely considered a great movie, one yeah. of Paul's best, but also one of the best horror movies. 
that is something that doesn't get talked about enough with school Sazy, I think, is he has a lot of dedication to like like bringing back movies that have basically become lost. I mean, he's dedicated to preserving film history, I think. I, I'm not familiar uh, very much with that aspect of Scorsese. Do you, or do you know if he's responsible for other films, or does he have a? I'm a not. Film I don't. Festival or something. I, I'm not an expert enough to really talk about it at length, mm-hmm. but I know he's helped restore many um, film movies over the years as well. I know he has like a film fest. He has a company, I believe, dedicated to like recovering lost movies and r- r- bringing them back out. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Answer. He's he's pretty awesome, man. He's not just the mafia guy. My dog um, just opened the bedroom door. <laughs> I love when they do that. Is it Frank or Conan? That's Conan. Frank's too small to do that. Can we? Well, does Conan let you pick him up? Um, I I will, but he might like use his legs to spring off of me. So we'll okay, see. then don't do it. Well, okay. okay, we get to the Patreon exclusive view of Conan O'Brien. Look at that he's dog. A, he's a big boy. That's he's a big. He's bigger than I thought he was. Yeah, he got big. Hi, buddy. Okay. All right, don't do that I'm white thing where you let him lick your face. Please don't. Oh God. You don't like that? No, I don't like that. Oh shit! Now hold on. You you began to think of jealousy. Well, now I have to hold Frank. There is Frank. Okay. Frank's cuter. He is. Yeah. Trust okay. fall real quick, Frank. No. Can you He's please? Like, can you tell us the 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 trust I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. No, no, you have to fill a second. We'll see if he does. Patreon exclusive. No. No, I don't think he's the audience here. <sighs> what so can you talking about? Can you explain what Frank does? The trust. What's the trust fall? Yeah, when he wants my attention. He will do a trust fall and I have to catch him or he will break his back. That's very cute. That's very cute. So. He's now licking my uh, bloody tissue. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I have a note about the stand-in in the movie. Okay. So there was a stand-in that he convinces to like sneak on set with him, right? What's the context of this again? Um, so she wants to i think she wants like some film what's it called like a, a reel oh yeah, yeah, yeah she wants a reel to to show people her artistic chops yeah and he basically talks her not talks her into it, but i guess she asks him to direct that reel for her. no put it away before you cut frank <laughs> and she asks him to direct that reel yeah um so she has a, a before he can begin like doing anything, she goes, Wait, I have to reel him up. And the whole fucking reel him up routine is the mo- most chaotic thing I've ever seen. She turns on this radio and begins dancing around this stage, just fucking everything up. She ruins the lighting. She ruins like half the set. No one knows she's not getting like a steady job. And and so you understand why he would kill her. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you know what? I um, we've I meant to bring something up. Speaking of, when he was showing that Tenet, the movie about his life, she was just commenting on every single thing. I was waiting for him to kill this woman. I hate someone who just talks during the movie, interrupting everything. Right? Yeah, like just making observations. Like there's a scene, Bill, um, in the in the movie, of the the boy of Tom. I don't know his name, is watching these two people make out. And she goes, ooh, naughty boy. It's like, shut the fuck up and watch the movie. Yeah, but and that's understandable. But then the parts where she's like, uh, I'm uncomfortable with this. What the fuck is happening? That's understandable. Like, no. I would be, I, uh, I'd be like, um, Mark, what's happening here? Why yeah. am I seeing your dad torture you? <laughs> I've shown you both videos of my dad's full trolling me. It's fine. No. So, the the other thing I was thinking is you, we're talking about him as being a peeping Tom. You're calling him Tom, even yeah. though his name is Mark. Um, but he was like tortured as a child and all that. But we like, do we think that the father was actually a peeping Tom as well as a voyeur? The dad well, was getting I, off on that as well. Possibly. You think so? 
I mean, he was getting off on still trolling his son. I, I got because there's a scene later on where the guy talks to like a psych, psych, <laughs> some some scientist. I forget who they are. Like a therapist uh, or a yeah. psychoanalyst or something. And they talk about some of the things um, his dad wanted to do, and they bring up that he was looking into making a peeping tom for the fact just for the fact of seeing how to make a peeping tom stop being a peeping tom so i wonder if he was doing all of this just to make his son a peeping tom yeah but that's like saying i'm gonna research pornography so i can end pornography or something like, no dude yeah, you, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you just want to research for not you just you're just a horny bastard or something i, got I don't you. know i think the uh other note i had was that he was his neighbor he like really well he thought he loved her or whatever you know how those old movies like they love each other after meeting for the first time sort of thing but yeah. so he, he kind of loves her and he's he says like she grabs his camera and like aims it at her and she's like no not you never mm -hmm. you i can never film you because he knows that if he films her he's going to end up killing her which he which he does want to do yeah and then her mom is blind. Best fault. Did you see it? I missed it. I was looking down. No, <laughs> he, he did it. Um, <laughs> so he might he, get you it again. Now we gotta watch. Nobody pay attention to Frank right now. I'm gonna just keep on talking. So uh, Frank is a good boy. <laughs> well, you can, you can just keep talking about what you will. There's no way about. I can keep talking when I'm looking at a dog, man. Dog gets full attention. I guess he gets one trust fall for now. <laughs> the next note I have is a quote. And it says, it's the quote from a uh, someone on the film crew, which is, that silly bitch, she's fainted in the wrong scene. Yes. Do you recall the context of that? Yeah. So when they, uh, so after he kills the first person that we, no, the second person was the second. who was the, who the was the stand-in. Stand yeah. He stuffed her into the, uh, 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 a, was it a container? A no, a suitcase. Yeah, a trunk. Tr stuffs into a trunk, and then uh, leaves the body there for whatever reason. I think it's because he wants to get caught. Just like at the end, he knows he's going to get caught, you know. And then the 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 um, woman, the actress, was having trouble fainting earlier in the movie, mm -hmm. and then they go, they open the trunk, and she sees an actual dead person and faints, and that's why he's like the silly bitches. Um, it's a great line at the wrong time. Yeah. I think it's the use of the real silly like, that made me laugh. Yeah, it, it it reminds me that the actual director of the movie, Michael Powell, was kind of like a real uh, asshole to Pamela Green, who was Millie. Millie was the a tenant. Uh, no, she was one of the two sex workers that he films oh, that he takes okay. photos of. She's the one who actually gets naked in the UK version. Um, yeah. She was an actual sex worker. Like she posed for nude photography in real life with her husband, who was a uh, a photographer, a nude photographer. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean that he was nude while he took photographs. It means. It doesn't he mean he wasn't nude. To yes, be, it doesn't. To be clear. Yeah. He said that she was being difficult, whatever the fuck that means. And so on the day that she was supposed to be naked, she shows up on set and sees like twice or three times the amount of people that are normally on set. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what the fuck is this? I'm not getting naked in front of all these people. And he's like, you have to, you know, whatever, whatever. She's like, well, that's that's fucked up, man. I don't like it. But it wouldn't happen with a intimacy field enable, which yeah, should they be did a not requirement happen. now. I don't know if it is, but it should be. Um, so they, so she was like, okay, fine. But why are all these people on set? And he was arguing with her and she's yeah. like, no, I just want the, the bare minimum people. Mm -hmm. And then, so then he kicked everybody else out, which I don't know why she needed to argue with him about that. And then there yeah. was another, another part of the movie where, um, she was being, uh, filmed by the, uh, by the character uh mark mm -hmm. and in the process of making th that shooting that scene they had to use these really bright lights and so the director was using these really bright lights on her so much so that after they film finished filming her eyes like puffed up she got really really like 
uh, bad reaction to how bright those lights were. Oh wow! And the photographer, whoever it was, told the director that she couldn't film that for the next scene or whatever. And she's like, "Just put the makeup on her, and we'll shoot, we'll shoot her or whatever." So like, he was really like, "What a, a piece dick. of shit!" Yeah, he was a kind of a dick to her, which unfortunately, like around these times and up until like even it still happens, you know, like women are subject to uh, asshole directors, you know, problematic directors. So, so I'm not really too worried when they say like this film, like almost ended his career. It's like, yeah, but it sounds like it was a piece of shit anyway. So. Yeah. Um, We had an intimacy and cruel needle on my movie. I mean, it's a great thing. I mean, because we did have a nude scene in that, but like it was really, shut off and isolated besides the the people who had to be in the room everyone else had to wait outside yeah like, why not there's no reason if there's no reason for you to be there like except to get your jollies and get the fuck out it's a big fucking red flag i think now if a director says they don't want one it's like why don't you dude yeah <laughs> what are you afraid of yeah like you, you want to see... make your actors as comfortable as possible you know? yeah fuck that don't be a peeping Tom, is what we say. Exactly. So uh, I don't think the one of the things we didn't talk about was the wh- horror of how he was killing these women. Mm-hmm. So we talked about the, the, the tripod and at the end of it, there was a like a knife, basically a sharp point. Mm-hmm. And he would be filming them as he's approaching them. And then he uh, the big reveal at the end of the movie because there's got to be some reveal, right? Because we know he's a killer right away. We know he's a serial killer. The big reveal is that he has attached a mirror at the end of the camera, and they see themselves about to be killed. So they see the face of death reflected back to them, and that's why they're screaming. It's pretty cool. I I love that reveal. My only criticism, besides the lack of true Peeping Tom-ishness, is the and again this is because 1960 every killing was pretty tame you know what i mean i wanted to see that phallic spike drive into somebody yeah i, I agree it. uh and then so at the end he's kind of he's caught in that, that i do that have was... i do have notes before we get to the end yeah if ahead. you don't mind mm-hmm. i i was puzzled by the police investigation maybe you can shine some light into that they were connecting the killings by the facial expressions of the corpses i found that a little yeah that silly. was very old the film that's like sherlock holmes era thinking that yeah some, when somebody dies their face stays that's like a. Not the ring, <laughs> um, the grudge or something the like grudge, that. You know? yeah. yeah. Where you, you, when you die, the face that you were making stays there. It's like, uh, that's not how that works, you know? I guess maybe I didn't really think about it until now. They were making a unique face because they were looking at themselves as they died. Right. But I was confused until right now because I forgot about that detail. I'm like, isn't everyone afraid when they die? I mean, what makes these people so unique? But yeah, the uh, reflection. But still, I doubt the faces would stay that way. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> they wouldn't. <laughs> it's so funny. I found that um, funny. Um, as little notes I have, the landlord is dating a tenant, really unethical. Um, oh, okay. the the blind mom. I, we have to get yeah. to the blind mom. So they'll say... There's a scene well he so he takes the the lady out on a date no camera she's like what you want me to bring my job with me too leave the camera so they go out on this date it's really funny because like he keeps seeing people in the throes of passion and he's like oh wheels my camera wheels my camera but he doesn't have it and she yeah. like has to drag him away like he's a junkie You're like no no you'll vent on this i found that really amusing but then when he, they get back from the date he finds the the lady the, na- the nabel's mom up in his his uh, projection booth room, I guess, upstairs, mm-hmm. and she's blind, and she's Darker. like, and she's like, I, uh, the blind always live in the rooms they live beneath, is what she says, which is a cool line because obviously she's listening to everything going on, but assuming that he's making this snuff film for uh, for Bill's reasons, what does this mean? That she's listened to this guy jack off like every night. What is she implying here? I mean, that's my only question I have. I don't think jacking off is loud. 
It can be. Uh, sure, but I don't think he's. It, de- it depends what type of seat he has. It might be making noise. Yeah. Okay. He might. He might be. Grunt- he might be grunting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He might be laughing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he could also have have the snuff film very very loud going as well. That is true, but I don't think he's recording audio. Oh. I think when she's saying that she hears them, she hears the footsteps because she even says like she doesn't trust his footsteps. They're very Neville trusts a man who walks quietly. I think is the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I understand that. Why? Why? That's just a stupid. That's a stupid line. Why not? That's, not, that's <laughs> one of those lines that writer puts that thinks that they they fucking I don't know rewrote. It's a, it's the type of line you will see eight out of every ten. Level box reviews just quoting that and nothing else. It's like, what does that mean though? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she also says something like she's blind and she but she says that she's up there every night or very often. She goes up there very often. That's not the first time she's gone up there. I no, she was saying that because every night she's endlessly oh, listening. That's okay, what okay. she meant. All right. Yeah, and then I'm I'm just dumb, but I get yeah. it. Yeah, but I thought the same thing. I feel it's not. How does he not know she's been inside like every night? But yeah. no, she's just mad. She listens every night. But then she then he she asks him to show him the movies that she that he's seeing every night, yeah. and then he's she's like, you could just lie to me because I can't see. But then so he starts recording her, and she's kind of she's scared, definitely scared. But I got the sense that she was kind of getting off on it. Yeah. And so, and obviously, so is he because that's his kink and all that. But then, like, he is about to kill her. He unsheathes his his thing thing the weapon. Yeah. <clears throat> but then he puts it away, and then but she's like asking him like, "Oh, you can st- you can keep filming me or keep photog- photographing me if you want." And it's, like, it's less like she was a peeping tom and more like she was a listening tom. You know. Be- also behind you. Um, is the postal from the movie and it says um to look met danger to smile met death i thought the whole thing was if you were afraid that meant you would die and that smile the quote makes no sense he only kills you if you act afraid on the video if you're smiling he doesn't give a shit smile like when you're about this when people take a picture they say smile so like that yeah doesn't doesn't um count all anything i just said yeah <laughs> moving on moving on. the last note i have is just weak suicide disappointed by the suicide do you want to talk about this do you want to tell the, the listeners what we're talking about so after he's killed uh, i think the body count is what one three well, I, yes i i was counting the <laughs> So it's one person in the beginning, then it's the um, then it's the body <laughs> double, and then it's the um, the sex worker. So it's yes, mm-hmm. it's three. Thank yeah. you, Max. You were right, Max. You were right. Uh, that, is that what you needed to hear? You're a good boy, Max. Good boy. I just I was saving you the obvious struggle. Of I had to go through it. I had to go through it. You can't let me do it, Max. So um, at, at the end of the film, he has been caught because they. Uh, he killed a uh, that sex worker at his place of business, so it got connected back to him. They start surrounding his house, and he does it, something that's pretty funny. Like in in a, in a gangster film or some other like crime film, when the people see the cops coming, they'll break out the window and then they'll have like a shotgun or a rifle or something like that to shoot at. To but in this movie, he doesn't have any of that. He breaks out the window and just starts filming them with the camera. That. And, and the cops are watch it, and then they're like, "Oh wait, it's just the camera." And then they go for it. I love that. It was like <laughs> was a little really bit cool. of like comedy, but also realism yeah. in mm-hmm. that scenario that I thought was great. Yeah, I uh, I was a fan of that scene. I was hoping it would be draw out a little bit longer than what it did, but uh, why would they stop? <laughs> it's yeah. just a camera. They wouldn't just like, oh no, he has a camera. Everyone's around. We can't go in yet. Yeah, I think. If it had been made in America, or I don't know, if some other director, some weaker director, or somebody not who was less uh, felt less capable story wise or whatever, they would have put like a gun in the camera, uh-huh. and so he's like shooting for the guy or whatever. Can uh, you but- imagine how unbearable this movie would be if they remade it now with the iPhone they would use? Uh-huh. I would hate it. 
like one of the biggest like like um pros of the movie it's just like seeing analog film and like the technology process if it was like all like just because you can imagine it right a remake of this would just be someone with a cell phone it would be terrible i would not like that yeah um i think they've probably made that dozens of times they just anybody with an iphone can make a movie which is great but also it, it leads to a lot of bullshit um but so then uh the cops come in and he doesn't kill um the, the uh, his girlfriend um what is her name helen he ends up setting up that tripod dick oh he stabs himself in, in the, the throat, throat with, his, with his dick yeah <laughs> like every man should like every, like yeah. every man ever wishes he could do and it's something he's been setting up this whole time he wanted to get caught so because he wants this to be the end of his movie it was a scene a few scenes back while he's waiting to be uh, interviewed by the cops and he's sitting next to somebody and the guy's like do you oh, think yeah he's he's talking to tom this random guy and he had recently gotten in trouble with the cops for filming them and the guy is like do you think they're gonna catch you and tom's like yes so he wanted it he wanted that. yeah he wanted to be caught he wanted to drive a phallic object through his throat i love the idea of this my criticism is it sucks the way they do it I want to see that thing go through his throat. Well, yeah. it's not a drop of blood in this movie, I don't think. I bled mill on this podcast and someone <laughs> bled in this movie. That's true. That's a good point. There is no blood on the, like on his throat. We, like he's covering his throat the whole time, but yeah. there is blood on the tripod leg oh. dick thing. So there, I just really blood. wanted to see him completely impale himself. That yeah. would have been amazing. Would and be what amazing. if he didn't die and he's just walking around the thing like, oh, oh. <laughs> they fucking cuff him and take him away with the thing in his throat. That would have been pretty you, awesome. You're hoping for like the 80s ending of this of this movie. And yeah, we, you we will see the 60 version of it. You will see the Buffy movie. Yes. Oh, with uh, uh, Pee Wee Herman. With, yeah. Well, like he's trying to. He's like taking so long to die. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, like I was hoping something like that would happen. Like even <laughs> after in the end credits, I think the last yes. he just, he's still dying. Yeah, uh, that's great. What's his real name? Pee Wee Herman. Uh, um, Ruben, Ruben Stevens or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Speaking of peeping toms. <laughs> That Paul Rubin. Paul Rubin. That guy committed no crime. Yeah, he was just jerking off in a theater, right? In a, in a pornographic theater. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't watching like Lion King or something. It was like <laughs> he wasn't watching Peeping Tom. No. Although, if he was, I think that'd be you know that'd be, that'd be okay. No, that means he's no. jerking off to people getting killed. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's it's less Strike about the movie the and more about the setting. If you're doing it in a, a theater, known for people drilling off, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Vic- victimless uh, crime. Like so, you like in uh, 1970s Times Square, New York. That's your that's your time. That's where you want to go back to. I love every movie I watch set in that space. It's always so great. It's yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to see on film. I'm uh-huh. sure it was horrible to live through. Oh yeah, I don't want to live in that. But yeah. I love I love visiting it through a cellu- celluloid, you know, safely just, from yeah. your couch. Yeah, I <laughs> like agree. I'm thinking of like um, Frank Hennon level movies, um, Taxi Drive, and all of that. It's really fascinating to watch that. Yeah, in my house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so have, that's essentially yeah. uh, the end of the movie. I mean, that is the end of the movie. He dies, and she One, passes out. Yeah, but I don't know if she passes out. Um, she falls she, to the floor. Yeah, yeah, she falls and grabs him, and she's screaming like she's like freaking the fuck out. Yeah, and I found that really interesting. That I think a different type of movie would play it a different way. Well, it would seem like a good thing that he was dead, and that was the end of the movie. But this, it really is a little gray, don't you think? But it's like, wait a second. The guy who's been killing everybody, he just committed suicide. And I kind of feel bad about it. Like, such a great movie. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely, I mean, he was a victim as well. Yeah. right. And I think that was, that's one of the things um, in contrast to Psycho, 
what what's better is that you feel more for this was he a protagonist he's in it even though he's a terrible he's a serial killer he's still a protagonist right anti-hero anti-hero, anti-hero? no He's just the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. he is. He I is mean, the protagonist. protagonist doesn't mean good pills. It just okay. means the main killer tool. Okay, so, he's, so so we feel for this protagonist, even though we know he's an evil person, or he's been killing people, what he went through he, like, is absolutely terrible. And you feel more for this, for him, than you, I do, I, I should say. Yeah. I feel more for this person than I do for like Norman Bates. Yeah, no. it's it takes talent to make the death of essentially the slasher to feel tragic, right? Yeah, and th- and I think he, I think he definitely did that. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael Powell did that with this movie. What a good um, guy, huh? No. Infam- right. inf- infamously a, a a good man. Everybody, everybody says that about him. Um, so. He, what he actually said was that when when Peeping Tom came out uh, and he got all this backlash, he said that his enemies in the industry used that as the time to kind of like uh, kick him off of projects and make sure he doesn't get projects done. But he went on to make like nine or ten other movies after this. He just never got like anything high profile or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, so that's that's the end of Peeping Tom. Um, you know, something so, else I was reading about compiling this to Psycho is another little difference is I believe Psycho was mostly funded by Hitchcock. So he had a lot of control with how it came out and compiled to Peeping Tom. It was more of a high profile type of thing. Well, it was it was like a big production company that produced it and um, financed it. So I wonder like if that had to do with one thing becoming so famous and the other thing kind of just crashing and burning. Yeah. And also like, I, I think the nudity didn't help it. Like artistically know speaking. About that. Yeah. Artistically speaking, I think the nudity is great. Even though I also didn't see the nudity, but I don't like shying away from nudity just for whatever reason. But yeah. um, in psycho uh, Hitchcock, there, there was no nudity. There was like, um shots of her in the bathroom but it was yeah tastefully done or whatever the, the way he moved the camera but it's so i think scene. maybe one of the best scenes ever yeah but i think that the nudity in this movie didn't help but i think that's one of the things that kind of like hurt it mm-hmm. um with audiences but so that's peeping tom from 1960 um what we do is we rate the movie um five upside down crosses so for you max how many upside down crosses would you give peeping tom Going between three and a half to Phil. All right, let's go with Phil. Famously, Max Booth I, I, I does not like giving ratings. So this is big. Big if uh, true. So okay. you said four upside down crosses. Is yeah. That right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I loved it a lot. I just, a few things I think could have been improved. So it's not going to be a five, but great movie. I, I'm glad I watched it. Okay. For me, I think I'm going to have to agree with you there. I'm at four upside down crosses. Uh, I really enjoyed it. This is the second or third time I've seen a movie. Really? Yeah, why? Oh, the movie. I thought you said a movie. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. This is, I've, seen, I've seen like three Count or four them. movies today. Like, so oh, I What else have you movie. seen? Um, I no not with it. I would say twenty four hour time period. Okay. Um, I saw the what was that movie? The Nightmare Before Christmas. So what did you think of that? Time. I'm, it, it, you have to watch it as a kid. That's what I was about to say. I didn't grow yeah. up with it. Yeah. Um, like the set. I, we're not here to talk about the Nightmare Before Christmas. Shut up, Max. <laughs> Rate it. <laughs> Four upside down crosses for Peeping Tom. Uh, and then what we did in the past, uh, something new that from the last time you were on Max. In the past, I would give you like assign three movies for you to be um, uh, saved of your horse and whatever. Since then uh, I suggest one movie to you. And then I ask for a suggestion from you. Yeah. So my suggestion for you for a movie that's in the similar vein um, is, have you seen, and I'm really hoping you haven't seen fade to black. Wait, I don't know that movie at all. No. What is this? Uh, fade to black came out in 1980. 
and okay. it is um directed by vernon zimmerman starring eric binford nope sorry starring dennis christopher and it's about uh it's like a sh- i'm gonna just read what it says on imdb I'm a shy right lonely now. film buff embarks on a killing spree against those who browbeat and betray him all the while stalking his idol a marilyn monroe lookalike and he works in the film industry i think uh in this case he works for like movie posters like the companies that make movie posters and other shit like that yeah and while they're because this movie came out in 1980 there's one scene where he's like in his boss's um office and you see just original posters of all like these amazing horror movies like halloween original poster and just other horror movies of that time just plastered yeah. on the wall I'm like oh man it looks awesome so i would say fade to black you uh, rated it my... three and a half yeah that's so a great can. movie. That's a good movie. Let's let's get. I'm gonna watch it. Maybe even tonight. All right. So, what would be your suggestion for me? So it's not gonna be in the same genre. Yeah, but same it fits. Genre. Have you seen Blowout by Brian De Palma? I have. Really good movie. Um, John Travolta, isn't it? Brian De Palma directed it. Maybe wrote it. I don't know. Blowout. <laughs> it's about a guy who is involved in movies. His job is recording audio to put into this the sound effects. So one night while he while he's at like underneath a bridge recruiting uh, traffic. So he's um just recruiting traffic to put into a movie. Um he witnesses a homicide and then gets thrown into like this big conspiracy paranoid thrill type of thing as he tries to like crack the case by spending a lot of time doing like technical shit to um pick up the sound of the homicide through the other like traffic noises is great great movie yeah i, I rated 7.4 and i i want to watch this movie immediately that looks awesome there's a lot of like brian de palma films that i i want to see that i just haven't seen like like Dude, his good. um like body double and like dress to kill like so, those are some movies that i want to see so but anyway blowout thank you very so, much i'm gonna be so checking dress it out. to kill i with Dress to Kill, I watched that recently. Uh, maybe last year, the year before. It doesn't hold up as much as I think it probably did back then. It's okay. I, I don't say this often, but there's some problematic stuff in it. But the movie looks great. Okay, I'm not a fan of the screenplay itself. Um, but Blowout, incredible. Definitely watch that. Max Booth has gone woke. Um, I am a little woke when it comes to that. I mean... Yeah. I'm looking at Brian De Palma's shit right now, and it's kind of incredible to think that he made that skull face, the original Mission Impossible movie, and the Untouchables. Like he is all over the place. Well, he also did Phantom of the Paradise. He did Carrie. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't it, seen Phantom of the Paradise. I know about it, it, but I haven't seen it. It's a lot of fun. It, I didn't think it'd be my type of movie because I'm not really down with musicals, but it's uh-huh. a lot. It's so much fun. It's um it's like a rock and roll phantom of the opera i mean essentially is what it is but it's okay. completely ridiculous uh, I, I i think i showed it to a friend of the show zach chapman and i don't think he enjoyed it but it's you just have to come i think it's maybe that's a compliment a, though if he doesn't yeah, that, like it i'll probably like it yeah uh, but anyway, okay so that is the show um max and i are going to continue our conversation on the, the post show but uh, that, it's going to be on Patreon. It is called uh, the Sunday School Sessions. But for right now, we're going to end this conversation. Thank God. Max, could you please let everybody know where they can follow you, how they could support you? All well, hold, stuff. Well, hold on. Max, where can why, people support why, you? Why, thank God. Let's talk about that on the post show. Okay. Where can so what do you want me to say? Where, where they fi- can follow you, where they can support sim- you. I'll make it simple. Stuff. Go to your uh, computer right now, folks. Go to the old browser. What do you have? Ask Jeeves, uh, Yahoo, Google, anything. Type in this website, www.fuckmaxbooth.com. That'll uh, take you to anything you want to see. Thank you for the reminder. If you want to know why he's got Fox Math with- fuckmaxbooth.com we're going to talk about it on the patreon thank you everybody for listening to this chaotic episode it happens every time uh max booth joins thank you for thank you for making it through that terrible terrible cut that max did to himself uh we will talk to you guys next week mm-hmm.